And no. um, there's as well over there uh, a roof terrace. Um, but this is not, you're not permitted to go there. Uh, so please do not use uh, that door. You can have to grab smoke or one to uh, grab a some air. Uh, if you want to have a smoke, just go downstairs somewhere. Uh, and you're good. So, uh, we are, we are uh, if we make uh, web applications. Uh, we mainly do this in .NET, and this is why we uh, love to host this uh, event here. Uh, we're very happy, and we're, I'm actually pretty excited myself to uh, be part of it. Um, but we're not just doing .NET things, we just love technique in general, and that's why uh, besides doing uh, this event in .NET, we also do different kinds of stuff. Uh, let's say, uh, soon we're doing this Elm uh, dojo where we uh, host ourselves this dojo where we uh, do this front-end programming language, so uh, it's, it's functional, so it's a functional programming language on the front-end side. Um, this, and we also did this uh, dojo uh, a couple of weeks ago where we ourselves organized also a uh, dojo. So we're very happy to uh, host this and um, yeah, have fun tonight. Um, please go ahead. Thank you. Now, before I begin, um, we're going to be doing a little app today, uh, end to end. So I, I see some of you guys had laptops with you, apples. That's cool. <laughs> Uh, this is a .NET and a cross plat talk. It doesn't matter. Uh, before I go, uh, before I'm going to start, I've got an Apple phone, by the way. I'm gonna, just going to take a selfie because this is actually the, the most people at my talk ever. So uh, but I'm going to use this in my talk, so don't worry. You have to say ping. One, two, three. There we go. Great. So I'm going to use this later on. So, uh, like I said, my name is Fani Reynes. Me and Gerald are going to be doing an application, the Pokemon application, but not the fully-fledged game you all, we all know and love. Um, we, we're going to be building one, um, the bare bones of it, uh, just to show you some, some quirks on the ASP.NET Core side and also the Xamarin side, but in practical. So, this, uh, like I said, this is a workshop kind of a thing. Hands on deck, no slides. Um, pardon the pun with the deck. Um, no slides at all. So let's get cracking. I've got 45 minutes. It might be a, uh, it might go um, a bit over, but let's uh, let's hope for the best. We all are developers here. Um, yeah. So to get started, uh, I literally went now and cleared my folder. To get started, yeah, we've um, we've included everything on the on the um, the back end of uh, side of things on my uh, GitHub repository, Funnyranger slash Pokey app. Here you can find uh, the latest version of the application. Um, but also, if you if you if you go to releases, you'll see there's uh, plenty of steps you can actually follow. So we're going to start off with the bare basics. Who have uh, um, who of you have ever worked with ASP.NET before in the past? And ASP.NET Core. All right. So you guys are fairly familiar with the environment and and what it is and all that jazz. So this is basically the bare basics one is just me showing you quickly what can be done. And then later on, we'll plug in MVC and we'll, we'll make the things work. So the idea is here as well to show you that you can do APIs without using MVC. You, you can literally use the normal middleware, make it readable, and let's get cracking. So the first concept we're going to cover today is uh, web host builder, Kestrel, and the application builder configuration. So hey, let's get cracking. So I've got a, don't see me code here. Uh, can you guys see there? OK, well, that should be fine. Um, I probably need to declone this probably. <laughs> so, clone my repository, do it from scratch, let's live large. Git clone. Boom. Awesome. So now we're going to be checking out, git checkout, step one, or step zero actually. Uh, not the ballot. Okay, I see. Do that again. Oh, you guys must help me. Yeah. Step zero. Okay, so now step zero is working. Hopefully, we've got code installed. And hopefully, text is readable for everyone. Readable? Must I enlarge it a bit? And zoom. Let's see. How do you do this here? Um, what? It doesn't work in. Where? Let's go to preferences somewhere. Sorry, I'm actually wasting time now. 
Oh, control V. Okay, well, yeah, we go. There we go. Okay, so this is our basic structure. We've got a literally a folder with some stuff in it. I'm not allowed to say a swear word here, so it's it's fine. <laughs> so here we go. We have a okay, this is Visual Studio Code, by the way, for the guys that don't know what it is. Visual Studio Code is Microsoft's answer to cross plat Visual Studio goodness. Um, the moment I opened this up, it knew I actually were working with uh, C Sharp and .NET. So it went in and sort of said to me, hey, uh, you've, you've got unresolved dependencies, yada, yada. Uh, do you would like to restore them? I say, yes, I just follow along. And uh, there's some tools I can, I can use for Visual Studio Code to make my life a bit easier, i.e. IntelliSense, like the Rosin bits, are all Visual Studio Code. The idea of Visual Studio Code is to actually have you work on, on any operating system, any, I mean, Linux-based or, or over there. Okay, <laughs> so this is our little bit, this is the bare basics you, you would need to make a, a, an API, in my opinion. You would need a web host builder. Now this is, a, this is basically a sort of a, a host for your server. And then you also need uh, some kind of HTTP server to tell it, serve my requests. Now in this case, I'm, uh, we are using Kestrel. It's Microsoft's ASP.NET's you know, uh, uh, cross-platform uh, HTTP server, quite fast. And the first thing we need to do is we say, hey, I need to configure it to serve some kind of response. So de default, I've uh, configured it to say, um, well, when an application runs, I um, asynchronously write my response, this will be awesome. And I hope this will be awesome because I haven't really sort of uh, tried this whole thing end to end. I've just bought, uh, bought the last bits and sort of worked it all, all the way back. Uh, just take a step quickly back to the whole, where is it now, the, the project.json file. Now, it's a bit different from the uh, project, uh, project, uh, project uh, csproj file or the um, web.config and app.config we have. This will probably change. It will change back to csproj or uh, app.config. But for now, we are stuck with project.json. And uh, here we can see it's, it's, it's sort of more readable. I don't know why, uh, really why they want to switch back. Um, but now, yeah, my only dependency here is, is Kestrel. And the idea of ASP.NET Core is to only use the dependencies that you want to be using, not the whole framework. Install the bits you're going to need and only work with that. And that's the, that's the main idea. And uh, on the bottom frameworks one, I'm going to be compiling this for uh, .NET Core 1.0, this uh, it's a .NET Core platform or the, um, the .NET Core 1.0 platform. You can put in more than one uh, framework, uh, like the full framework if you want as well, so it will um, compile double. Now, I'm going to live large and I'm going to run this guy. Hopefully this will work. So see if it's uh, Visual Studio. And it uh, will be compiled, blah, blah, blah. Let's see what happens. Compilation succeeded. Now, I also have sort of, um, I also have, yeah, this is just a uh, cool example. <laughs> Just going back, see what's happening here. I've got debugging in Visual Studio Code. So I'm not even using the full-fledged uh, Visual Studio. So this is Visual Studio Code still. Um, and I'm doing it um, by choice to show you guys what can be done with, with almost nothing. So if, if I now navigate to localhost 5000, which is the route of our, uh, or the root of our application, we'll see this will be awesome. Cool, can I move on? Boring, level of boringness, 9 to, nine to 99. You decide. <laughs> very, fresh. very fresh, cool. No, not at all. <laughs> okay, so let's move on. So, uh, any API, um, well, before we actually move on to that step, let's quickly check out uh, what's on um, step two. Uh, so step two. Great, so now here we'll see this. Now, it, it asks me again to restore some files, which is wonderful. Oh, by the way, you can you can say close here, and you can go back to command prompt, and you can go cd into the directory, which is uh, pokey app, I think. SRC, there we go, thank you. That's done well. Sorry. No, backslashes is messed up on this machine. I blame the black backslashes. Uh, let's see, pokey app. There we go. That's it. You can also do that, you know, 
in the background, that's what Visual Studio Code does. It runs a, a .NET restore and, and restores everything for you. All right, so I've got numerous things here. Uh, I've got a, a, a client validator. Oh, I'm on the wrong step, actually. Should be step one. You're right. Zero base system. There we go. Let's start over. Okay. Now let's do it from here. Okay. Now when we look back at our at our code, it's a bit cleaner, and this is what we want. We want clean code. We don't want all the classes into, into one file, which we can do, but you know we want clean code because your fellow friends, developers are going to be working on this as well. Uh, so here we say use cache file and also use startup and some kind of class. So the startup we define here is just um, by nature it's the same now, but you can also you, you can name this foo, bar, whatever you, whatever you want. Uh, that entails that it's going to be using this class as the bootstrapping of our application. And here, uh, as you can see here, uh, here I'm trying to sort of be a bit clever with ASCII code. Um, not just uh, returning, this will be awesome. So technically, if I hit save, and let's actually go back here and say uh, .NET run. And then um, who knows about Postman? The whole world knows about Postman. And the, 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 most of you doesn't know about Postman. We're building APIs here. Postman is the awesomest uh, sort of restful, sorry? SOAPI is cool, but it's a bit bulky, you know? It's a bit bulky. But use SOAPI, if it, use whatever works, I would say. So now I've got my feed. Oh, well, that's there. And let's see, we've got a Poke API. Woo, awesome. So this, just to show you how you can use the whole configure um, thing to sort of uh, have a bootstrap class separate from your, from your actual main uh, program in a little static file. In essence, what this thing is doing, if you're going, do you see that, IntelliSense in Visual Studio Code? Whoa, awesome. <laughs> so take a look here. If you go and go to configure or configure services and configure logging, all these things are available or should be available in your startup CS uh, uh, file if you want to be using it. So the signatures needs to match. Otherwise, it won't pick it up. Like I mentioned here, if we go a bit up here, this needs to be configure. You can't go type there foo and expect it to work. You need to tell that, OK, it's, it's configured. It needs to match configure. It needs to accept a uh, I application builder in there. Now we can go to step two, right, to, to actually get more, more things going. So in the API, it's important some security. So um, I'm going to stand a bit still on that security point because APIs need to be secure. And in this case, I'm, not, uh, I'm just going to sort of serve it over HTTP. But now we're going to be implementing a JWT token. Who has ever heard of JWT before? OK, so I can tell you guys anything. You'll believe me. <laughs> no, so JWT token stands for JSON Web Token. It's sort of becoming a new standard um, for uh, web authentication or service authentication. It's almost the same as OAuth, but it's a bit more li lightweight and a bit more sort of understandable. Um, please go and Google what JWT token is. If you go to jwt.io, and go read up on it, and it's it's actually quite cool. So let us go to the next step of this whole thing. Let's just stop this guy. Let's go to step two, and we see the code evolve. It's awesome. Great. Actually, yeah. okay. So. The, G, the JWT token, how it works is imagine your application has uh, some kind of store that stores, um, imagine your service has some kind of store that stores applications. You know, if you register the application, you get a, a, an ID and a secret, i.e. You, you'll get back a username and password when you register that thing. So like Twitter, is, uh, you've got a consumer ID and a consumer secret. You uh, it's to sort of keep that, um, keep that uh, secret within itself. Now, uh, how it's going to work is we're going to be uh, posting to a certain token endpoint with our secret and with our ID. The server is going to validate this information you know, in our database or wherever we, we want to store these things. And in essence, what's going to be happening is uh, it's going to issue when everything succeeds and you know the guy is allowed or the app is allowed to sort of talk to the service, it's going to go ahead and create a token, a JWT token. 
Now, J JWT token basically is a signature, is, is, is a signed hash of itself. Uh, uh, that token can be easily decoded part of it, but it, um, it's also encrypted part of it. So it, you don't know exactly what's in there. So uh, the service uh, uses the server key to actually encrypt the, the, the JWT token. And also, the, um, when it gets a token, every request, when every request gets uh, passed through, you need to pass a token through. The server then, um, in real time, sort of checks the token in, in itself. It doesn't go to services or whatever to, to actually check whether the guy exists. It's sort of it's self-contained. If it does um, succeed, if it's sort of if it's intact, then it's assumed that the, the, then, this, uh, then the, the yeah then it's secure and then it's uh, it's assumed the guy can 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 pass through. So we have a um, client validator that we've implemented here. It's just called Verify, just to check the username and password, or in this case, um, app ID and app secret, or consumer ID or consumer secret. It will return a bool. The implementation hereof is, in my case, I, I'm not connecting to a database yet or anything. It's just a normal uh, dictionary. We have uh, app123 and app uh, secret123. And um, that's our database. And then we're just going to check against that, that values. Easy enough, eh? Now, going back to our startup page, we see a few things changed. We now have a, a section called Configure Services. This is where you do your dependency injection wiring. So in ASP.NET, uh, wire up all your dependencies. And then you use your, uh, wire up all your dependencies, and then afterwards use your dependencies. So the add use model or add use pattern kind of thing. So here we say, okay, um, I would like to to have a dependency um, i client validator, and the implementation is a instance of client validator, and that's singleton. And also want to throw in authentication in that pipeline. Now authentication comes actually from the whole be uh, JWT token bearer authentication uh, that you can add on your uh, project or JSON. That's all the bits of the ASP.NET security framework that's, that's built in that you can. So now we have our services set up. In our application builder that we get in, the next step we need to do is we need to sort of create parameters to tell it how to sort of um, encrypt this, this key. Uh, what does JWT? need to do with our token? How does it need to validate? What does it need to validate? All these information. So um, in terms of simplicity, I just went and say no audience needs to be validated. Um, it needs to be a valid issuer. And also uh, the, the key that I signed this with needs to be um, needs to be valid as well. well. We'll actually give the key here. Next step is you know plain English. You can say. Uh, just use the JWT token uh, authentication. This is actually extension method. If you F12 in there, F12 in there, it's a whole big thing. I will zoom down a sec. So this accepts a application builder, an endpoint, and some options. Here is all, where all the good things uh, happen. Now, we here we're actually t telling ASP.NET, hey, I want to uh, I, I want to be using uh, bearer authentication, and it's going to be sorting that out. So it's going to be the little firewall for you to, to check the, the JWT tokens in and out. But you need some kind of way to issue those tokens, and you need, you need to implement that yourself. You know, in this scenario, so we went here and um, we actually go in using middleware. We uh, say app.use. And with that same signature, we have a request delegate that accepts a, a HTTP context and a next request coming in. That gets executed. Now, it's important. We check all three things of, uh, in this request. We, we check um, is our path, because how a middleware works is every request goes through middleware. And if it, if, it, uh, um, if it succeeds over certain validation rules, it gets stuck there or get passed on, or it gets ignored totally, or it stops there and, and, and returns back. That's how middleware sort of works. Here we check, is our path what we say our path is? In this case, we pass our path in, in the um, application um, or in the function. Is our method post? Well, hopefully. And also, is it a form content, uh, or is the form encoded uh, content type? When that's done, take this away. Let's explain it like this. 
We grab the headers. Uh, we use the client validator from the application services. We can literally go app, app dot application services. It will grab the dependencies. It will get the service uh, type of client validator. Doing it like this is because it's an uh, extension method. You can't really inject uh, stuff in the extension method. You need to sort of do it this way or even with a funks or something like that. You can also do it. Step, we grab the uh, username and password from the authorization header. So now the username and password is the application ID and application secret that I said e earlier. By this rule, uh, it uses basic authentication. That's why I said it needs to go over HTTPS. You need to post your application ID, colon, and your application secret, base64 that. Take that value, create an authorization header, call it basic space, and then stick that whole encoded value in there. And that's how you authenticate. That's, that's how basic authentication works. So it, it authenticates with basic authentication. Here it checks if the, uh, if the key and the um, password, or well, the application key and secret uh, is, is fine. If it is fine, I generate a token using my super duper utility. I'm not going to go into details. You guys can go check it out at the, the GitHub repository if you, if you want to. Generate the token with all my parameters I get from my extension method. Very important, I pass in this, the, the signing key because the, when I sign my token, the key needs to be the same as where I verify my token. You know, it, it needs to sort of match. And here I just say, I want to write to my response back a JSON object uh, with my little token. If it's not succeeded, give me back a 403, which is, I think, permission denied or something. Forbidden, here we go. And then uh, if all else fails, it just continues to the next request in the pipeline. So if you have an image there somewhere, and if you implement it, it will actually go there and it will, it will, it will reach there. Uh, let me just see if there's something else I need to do here. OK. So also furthermore, what I've done here is, so see this as the sort of the way the things are implemented. So first, I set up my authentication. Then I have um, an endpoint a ping endpoint, that will re just return Pong. Then I say, use authorization. So here's going to be the security gate. And anything beneath this will actually kick in with my um, application. So if I'm going to now be, if I let's see if this is restored. Should be restored. If I now run this. .NET run. And if I run this again, I should be getting a invalid token. Let's just go there to the. Cool, you can see. Invalid token 401 um, unauthorized. There's actually a bug because it's actually supposed to send back 43 for some reason. Oh no, 401 is invalid token because I actually send in a token here. That's a previous request. Also 401. Okay, but it's it's invalid. All right. If I go to my ping endpoint, I get pong back, which is quite cool. So we have a so, sort of a semi secure thing going here and, and, and uh, without MVC yet. So this is bare bones ASP.NET, like in just we are building this thing. All right, now let's authenticate to this thing. So I, I said earlier, we need to say basic authentication. And I do this in Postman because it's, it's much easier. I will show you now how it works. Uh, then I pass in my application uh, one, two, three, app one, two, three, and my app secret four, five, six. Now this is issued by the server. So the idea is when the application gets registered for, for the access to the API, the API needs to register, uh, give them these de details for him to, to, to store somewhere safe. Uh, I say update request. And now you see there's an authorization header st stuck in here. So authorization space and your base64 string. So if you're going to decode that base64 string, you'll get your username, colon, your password. That's uh, pretty much how it works. And importantly, we need to post to this endpoint using a URL, form URL encoded um, content type. And not ping pong. We need to go to the route. Invalid token still. Why is it invalid? 
Sorry? Password. password is wrong. What is the password? What? App secret. App secret. One, two, three. Cool. No underscore. Serious? I'm sure there's a. Uh, okay. Cool. I believe you. Good audience. I'm doing this as a sort of. I'm testing you guys actually. Still, update requests. No, yeah, come on. What's happening? Nothing's working. Oh, I'll be. I did. <laughs> Let me see. Update request. It is invalid token. Oh, yeah, you're right. There we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Here we go. Cool. Yay. I hope, I hope we've got a prize for that guy. What's your name, sir? Effort. I'll remember you. Thank you. <laughs> so this is the sort of the, the message we get back. So the idea is with the application first start up. You must listen now because you're going to build it. <laughs> when applications first start up, it asks the service, hey, I'm, I'm this guy. Please give me a token. The server then issues this whole big token thing. We can copy this whole token out, and we can go to jwt.io. To sort of verify if the token is intact or yada yada. They've got a nice little debugger here. So if I paste this in here, it will say the token is not very, um, or the token is not, can actually do this, it's awesome, is invalid. And this is the sort of the parts of the, of the whole, um, it's got a header, it's got a payload, and it's got a, it's got a verified signature. Now, we need to provide a, uh, the secret in there. I think it's super duper secret key. One, two, three, I think, and it's encoded, and it uh, sort of verifies it. So only if you know the the server key, then you can come here and sort of check if the, if the token is is awesome or not. So in our case, it's awesome. We can now take this token. We can do a request to our um, get endpoint, the, the the root. We take the authorization out. We we say we want actually we want it uh, bearer. And this is how uh, token authentication works. You need to say bearer space and the token. And in OAuth, you say, I think it's also bearer. Or is it OAuth? Yeah. Yes. Paste it in there. You can actually get rid of that. And then something's happening. Wait. It's, it, it needs to be get. And here we say authorization, bearer. We can spell bearer space. Set. There we go. And now I'll get back your, your your endpoint. Now, also I've included a app ID in there to sort of uh, show that it's actually validating the application and sort of showing it the application it's uh, doing the thing correctly. It's basically in the user claims single or default because you can have more than one claim. And I just uh, literally write it out there. Is this cool? Level boring? Is it a bit more, bit more intermediate? Are we moving towards the pros? I oh, will see in a sec. <laughs> cool. You guys are ready for step? Was it now? Step it's three. Yeah. There we go. Step three. In this step, we are going to be cleaning up a bit, and we're going to be utilizing the configuration model of ASP.NET. Because I mean, face it, all these configuration we've done in memory and classes and dictionaries, and uh, just, you just feel dirty, you know. So the idea is of the configuration model of ASP.NET is awesome. It allows you to do configuration from just about anywhere. You can also write your own configuration providers, meaning you can. Uh, we all are familiar with the app, app config file, but now they moved over to a new configuration model. You can have app, uh, you can have uh, uh, JSON files, XML files, any files. You can have uh, in-memory um, allocations, uh, command line uh, variables. You name it. You can. There's even one guy that did the YAML uh, implementation. You have a YAML file to provide your parameters or your settings for you, which is uh, quite cool. Now let's quickly look at a code. Now restore. Later on, I will show you guys how Visual Studio looks, if you, if you don't mind. <laughs> All right, so it is, it is restored. So things look a bit interesting now. So let's quickly take a look at our bestanden in Dutch, how they say it. 
our files look. We have our app settings. Now we've moved all our JD, JWT token authentication options. We've moved now to a file, the app settings file, with a certain section, the JWT token, uh, the JWT authentication options. With our valid issuer, uh, do we need to validate audience and also our uh, token um, endpoints? This means we can set a token endpoint on certain environments. We can, uh, we can use on dev, we can use app settings. On production, we can use environmental variables or YAML, whatever. And I'll show you in a sec how we do, how we do that. Um, we have our any file. I've decided to use the any file just to sort of demo this. Here's a list of consumers, and now the secret is, is uh, the proper one. Your sections, uh, consumers with our app IDs and our app secrets. Who understands emails here? <laughs> any file, <laughs> Google it. <laughs> our consumer validator is the same. But now the, the, the difference here is it, it's expecting a I options um, variable, type of I options variable with a uh, consumer options into that. Now I'll get to this all in all a sec. So let's quickly go to our startup file. So here is where the magic kind of happens. ASP.NET, we want to make use of the configuration builder. And building this configuration builder, we say, hey, our base path is our current content route. With other words, our sort of current directory. We want to add a uh, JSON file, app settings. JSON, reload that file whenever something changes to re repopulate the stuff. And also dot add any file and the path to the any file and uh, it will it will pull that in. And if you're going to be normalizing these things, you will see it sort of um, the format, even though the formats are, are different, it sort of normalizes in the same kind of, uh, it flattens the whole structure. So it's, uh, it's, it's a bit more sort of workable. Here we make use of the environmental, uh, the hosting environment. So if it's development, I'm going to be using App Secrets. So I've uh, installed App Secrets here with um, Visual Studio. Uh, let me just see here. It's a NuGet package. Oh, by the way, the JSON and the any uh, files are separate NuGet packages. So you can totally do your own one called Infi, and it will, if you implement it correctly, it will it will probably work. Uh, Install the user secrets. This is important for this step, though. You have to sort of pay attention because in this tool section, it's sort of like a pre-built task. It's sort of um, you can register sort of to do commands and stuff. It will add the secrets tool to your to your solution only in, 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 um, in development mode uh, and read it out. So secrets are managed on a sort of a different level than your in your application. This allows you to sort of store um, user credentials uh, that's not check into source code, source code. I mean, because app settings and consumers and stuff like that are all checked in to, to source code. I think I've actually ex explicitly ignored the consumer's any file, just have to make sure. But we don't have to worry about managing secrets on this level if we're going to be using secrets. Uh, I've, if we go back to the whole GitHub repository, we go down. Do you guys have QR codes, by the way? <laughs> QR codes, I think you scan that thing. Yeah. Right, so you just get it ready. After the session, you just, um, after all our sessions, I'll put it up again. Just please re um, write and review our, our uh, presentation. So here I've got to some instructions how we can actually make use of this whole thing. Um, so I'm making use of the secrets to store my server, uh, my JWT token um, issuer signing key. Literally, I think this won't work here, will it? User secret set, and then you see what I mean by normalized? It's the section, uh, dot, uh, colon, section, 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 and it will, it will work from there. It's been saved. Awesome. So now it's been set, my super duper secret key. If I want to see how it looks, I can go .NET, user secrets, I think it's list. You see all my secrets there listed, and it's valid for this machine under my name and whatnot. So if I migrate machines, I need to sort of re-add it again, et cetera. You can also do this on, on Azure, using the Azure, what, what's it called? Azure Secrets or something, Azure Keyboard, yeah, something like yeah, that. You can use the Azure Keyboard. This is sort of the, kind of the same, uh, same implementation. <laughs> no problem. All right, so now we have our signing key set up. Go back to a startup page. 
And here, if we want to use environmental variables, I just say, hey, ASP.NET, if there's any environmental variables, also use that. And it also works on a sort of an overriding matter. If you have the same key on the environmental variables, it will override the one that uh, was previously defined. So you can totally do, like, do overriding stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, is it? Yeah, I think it, yeah, I think it depends on your, on your sequence. I'm 99% sure of that. <laughs> yeah, it, it makes sense if you say, yeah, I think it makes, uh, just have to double check that. In the break time, I'll, I'll double check that for you. Uh, in our services, yet again, we, we need to make sure that our dependencies are set up. So we say, OK, we want to be making use of options. So services say, I want to use options. That's going to give you the possibility to pass in I options into our sort of uh, classes. And uh, the configure is a new thing. This will allow any services that require um, I options so sort of to pass consumer options con configure type of consumer options that's that class uh, the poco class I've created earlier get that section out of my out of my file wherever it might live and sort of try to sort of put it in an object serialize it deserialize it into an object for me so that I can have a strongly type I options type of um, consumer options. Here's my authentication again. And here, I have just add my uh, configure options again. Uh, this time, I'm configuring it with the J JWT token uh, options. Here is a, a bit special, because I'm actually doing a uh, GWT, JWT token options configuration. Not that was the wrong button. There we go. This does. <sighs> A lot of things. So on this configure, it sets the service provider. It, re, um, it, it reads the services out of my um, uh, service factory, sort of to get my, my options. Uh, it, it tries to find the issue assigning key from, from wherever is, is passing me that options. In this case, it's the secrets. And then it's, it creates a parameters file from the valid issuer, valid audience, or to, must it validate the audience out of the file again. And also, the signing key is a, a symmetric security signing key, a base64 encoded one. It will chuck that in there. And also, it will sign the token endpoint. You guys can follow along so far, eh? hopefully. Yay. <laughs> cool. Furthermore, I've just decided to sort of say, hey, I want to be able to access my configuration builder from anywhere. And I've just added the singleton to say, I want to be able to access I configuration I configuration root from, from anyway. So I can actually inject this in and it will it will work. Or it should be passed along. This configure services is part of the app, uh, the start, startup.cs uh, file. So this uh, I said earlier this startup.cs is the is the bootstrap of the application. So any uh, C sharp application starts off uh, the main. So here it sort of gets fired off. I don't know why it's so here I say um, use CrashCool server, and also I want to be making use of the startup file, the startup class called startup in this case. So it will point, yeah. And it will know to sort of a, um, to con configure my services, it needs to invoke that request delegate. To configure my application, I need to call configure. So yet again, at configure, nothing probably changed that much. Yeah, I just say use bare authentication. Pass in my JWT tokens and see here it, you can actually pass the the options in like that. I option I, uh, I options type of your 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 class name where it's binded, uh, and here it will actually give you a uh, a value that's type of JWT token options. I'm interested in the token endpoint, and uh, I give it my validation parameters, how it should validate, and the rest are basically still the same. I'm not going to run this. It's going to be working exactly the same. It's just the configuration. It's it's uh, just a bit better. But let's just run this and see if it works. Actually, .NET run hash is a new thing. It, <laughs> boom. <laughs> Value could not be null. Issue assigning key did not work. Why did my issue assigning key not work? Yeah. Let's go back. All right, so I 
Why did it break? Any takers? Really? <laughs> it's okay. I make a lot of mistakes today <laughs> so far. Uh, okay, so it's looking for that secrets file. Uh, backslash uh, poke app. Has it come on? I'm not a CLI guy. Keep on pressing hashed all time. Ah, not dot net run. It's almost beer o'clock. That's why I keep on. Let's just see. Uh, exception, blah, blah, blah. Issue key not found. Invalid key, add key to configuration. Yes, issue assigning key. So, yeah, if I go to the. Ah, uh, you know what? Um, issue assigning key. Here we go. That's what I did. This worked earlier, I promise. Uh, .NET secrets, user secrets. It's there. Issue assigning key. Is it .NET? Build, maybe. It's working. Help me. Uh, I wonder if this is the problem. Yeah, this is the problem. Okay, so I need to configure my development environment. It's not adding my secrets. So I'm just going to sort of comment that out for now. I'm not, there's no time to sort of go into the environment now to, to set it. I can actually set it. It sort of tells me yeah, if I can set it. I'll show you now. Let's go up. Stop. Okay. Let's try this again. .NET. Build. It's not giving me that option. I see hosting environment production. I can set uh, the, okay, it shows it works. <laughs> so um, I can set my hosting environment. I'll show you in Visual Studio in a sec how we, how we do that. In fact, let's actually go to Visual Studio right now and open it up there. Okay, so the thing is working. And if I request this, my token is valid for an hour. So this is my sort of way of saying if my token is expired, I need to end my talk. So it's an hour that we, <laughs> that we kind of have, hopefully. <laughs> From when I issued it, so you guys are is, okay. So the thing is still working, yeah. How it's supposed to be working? It's it's awesome. So let's close down uh, Visual Studio Code and quickly open uh, Visual Studio Community. By the way, Visual Studio Community 2015 is free. You guys can go and download it at visualstudio.com. Uh, free for open source and uh, small projects or team of five or less that's not making money. If you guys are interested. I need to sort of talk here because this thing is opening up and blah de blah. I, I assume every one of you have, have been using Visual Studio before. Yeah, cool. Uh, OK, so let me see. If you're actually going to right click on the xproj file, that's your project file, you can go to your debug. You can set that environmental variable ASP.NET Core environmental. So now, in this case, it, Visual Studio sets it as development. So from here, if I run this, it will work. Actually, go back here, and we need to comment this guy out. It just shows you if you, if you if you make a mistake, it's it's like writing a book. You know, we're reading a book. You know, coding. In fact, if you if you make a mistake on page two hundred ninety nine, the whole thing doesn't make sense. You know, like we don't, like we've done yet. Okay, so let's run this guy. Won't give me address. Run again. Ah. Okay. So, kind of, I think runs. Keeps on opening up API values at Visual Studios. So 
I've got 15 minutes left and see if we can say so it's running here. It's development and it didn't sort of complain about my about my secrets, which is uh, quite cool. And if I send this thing, hopefully it will still it will still work and it's uh, still awesome. All right, so now the what's a do you guys are understanding what I'm doing so far? That's a bit uh, it gets a bit more complicated. I promise it'll it'll get there. So this is how we actually add G JW tokens to our sort of our API, make it secure. Um, I say secure because this is not secure at all the, the way I've did it for the for the demo, but it's easy enough to understand hopefully. Moving on, let's go to my releases. What's what's next? Next is just uh, middleware. Okay, refract the middleware. Now, as we can see, how is that? How, how things are structured here is a bit, it's a bit um, dodgy. You know, you have your come now. You have your bearer authentication, you have your, like I said earlier, putting all the stuff into one file is not really what we want. What we want is, yet again, the refactored step is git checkout. Let's try this again. Step four, right? What? That's fine. It's five, isn't it? Step four. Yeah. Okay. It is step. It's step four. Ah. What? Oh, yeah. You're right. Uh, <laughs> all right. Let's try that again. There we go. Nice. Okay. They have refracted my code a bit, and see how it's sort of morphing into something like MVC. I'll configure to go up a bit more. I can actually use this touchscreen. It's actually perfect. Uh, all the way. Uh, if I let me see, uh, everything is still the same. At configure, I say app map endpoint add more authorization app map in where it's protected resources. I want to I want to map it to that uh, delegate. So the get delegate is on a pin controller, and the get delegate is on a home controller. I call it controllers. It's not the MVC kind of controllers, but you see where I'm going with this. If we go to the actual controller itself, that's not the right button again, Bonnie. Right. It's a new laptop. Yeah, uh, it's a normal, uh, normal class with a static method delegate. I've messed something up now. Yeah, there we go. Um, and it's just the, the code is uh, just moved around, but it's just to show you how how MVC is actually built on middleware itself. You know. Uh, this is not MVC controllers yet, but it kind of looks like MVC, right? So with my gets and my and my posts and and stuff like that. That's pretty much I've done in this step is bit of refactoring, put the stuff in a bit bit uh, heater folders there. Um, I put all the sort of JWT token stuff in the infrastructure folder. All my middleware shoved into the middleware folder. There's all my options and my validation logic. Gets more more neat as we go on. This is what we want. We want to be able to have readable code. Now we're going to go to the cool stuff. Step five. Great. So this is MVC. Now this is where we uh, introduce MVC to the mix. And as you can see, the things aren't really that different, all right? So it's it's pin controller, still pin controller, but instead of having a static get, it's just now an instance get or whatever you want to call it, the instance method. Um, and how I done that is basically using MVC, but MVC core comes with the full core and a core core. Does that make sense? You can make use of the full core of the full MVC core. Uh, that will include Razor. That will include um, uh, your full MVC framework. Everything, all, all the bells and whistles, tag helpers, you name it. If you want to be using MVC core core, it's only the core bits you want to be using. So we that's why I'm interested in the core bits because you know I'm, I'm concerned about performance. 
um, I only want to be using the, the bits of MVC that actually matters for my API. I don't want to be using Razor. I want to only be using the request response kind of things and security and whatnot. And I've, there we go. So this is how I've added here, MVC core. That's done. And like anything else, MVC is a middleware. Our stuff that we configured here, this is the important part where we say, and this is very important actually, services.add MVC core. You can say add MVC, it will add the whole damn thing. Or you can say add MVC core and pass in the options. That's MVC specific options. Here I create a new authorization policy and I say, hey, uh, put in a global filter all over the show with this authorization. So I don't, need, I don't need to sort of secure every endpoint. I can secure globally all the controllers I want. And then explicitly allow requests through if I want to be using allow anonymous for, um, uh, attributes on my controllers. So you will see that in a sec now. And most important thing is add, author add authorization needs to appear on this level. Because if you, if you could take a look at how the code was, it was at authorization. Yeah. If you do that, it skips MVC totally. You can work in your MVC world, but it's going to be skipping MVC. It's going to be going over the, its head. You need to tell it, OK, I don't want security on that level. I want MVC, because this thing is returning a MVC core builder. I want MVC to sort of manage my security. So that's why I'm saying add authorization on MVC level. That will allow me to do things like, where's my controller? So I can do things like authorize, authorize, like this. Okay, I don't need to do it here because I've globally applied it now. But if I do that on a controller, it stops it from getting into that, uh, into that controller. Um, Nevertheless, like our ping controller is a little anonymous access controller. Yeah, I say, I actually want allow anonymous through to my controller. So it will still work. So let's see how this also works. Just quickly, a, uh, the actions of MVC works on the HTTP verbs, um, what do you call it, the notion of, uh, what's the word of it, get put, post, delete. It's, 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 it's on that pattern or that, um, whatever you call it, Me uh, method. But there's a different word I'm looking for, but OK. <laughs> verbs. HTTP verbs, yeah. It's, it's, it's that, but, it, but it, it uses that sort of convention. That's the, that's the word. It uses that convention, sort of maps it. You can, you can do foo, yeah? But then you have to sort of tell it, hey, I actually want to be HTTP get, blah, blah, blah. And it's not delete, but I want it to map to HTTP delete or what have you. Um, OK, so everything is still the same. Um, Yo, no. question. Um, if you do things like this, if you change the back of case, um, is it allowed to write or can you have multiple get methods? Yes, you can have multiple get methods. It, uh, yes. Depends on the parameters and how you use it and how it binds it and stuff. Um, up to up to a certain extent, because uh, everything is strings, and when a, when a, when a model binder gets in, if you, if you have optional parameters and stuff like that, it won't always bind. You then you have to do do a uh, what do you call it a custom route resolver and do it like that. Um, this action result is a um, is a new OK object result, which is OK uh, result with an object in there. Also note that we don't have a, you know, with the MVC, the previous MVCs you inherit from a, a controller. This is now POCO. So it, it, it uses the convention of whatever ends of controller, it picks it up as a, as a, as a class. So it's normal, normal POCO classes. You can also change controller if you want, because it's, it's changeable. You can change the convention. You can make it home infi. And everything that has an infi suffix, it will pick it up as controllers, and it will, it will work from there. It's quite cool. The benefit of using the, the base is you get context. You get your, your HTTP context and stuff like that. But it's possible using the POCO classes, using a little, I call it a hack. It's a sort of injectable kind of thing. You decorate your, your property that is an action context. And you say, this is action context. 
and you just ask the action context property. You have your HTTP context, user claims, blah, 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 blah. And it works from there. Same goes for um, ping pong, you know, ping and pong. But you can do cool stuff like not found result to, to return a 404 back. Much more readable. Now let's see if this works again. Okay, this is working. Can I have some drums, please? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so let's see. Go, 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 and it works. Same thing. Everything works. Ping. Ping will also work without auth authorization. That's cool. Ping pong. Awesome. I know I'm really going a bit over time, but just bear with me, yeah, please. Uh, okay, so that's MVC. Do the mix. I would advise you guys to go and go check out the new MVC, how it's, how it's done. They've completely rewritten it from the ground up to sort of cater for these scenarios. You can use only what you want, you know, and that's the beauty of the whole thing of ASP.NET. Okay, so let's go to step six. So what did we do in step six? Oh, I actually haven't gone into attribute routing. Uh, is it? No. Do you want this? Must I skip it? Well, it's uh, no, it's not really new. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, let's, let's undo this whole thing. Okay, let's go. Go. Git clone. Git check. Uh, Git reset. Hard. Cool. And this step, I what is happening here? Let's just go. Okay. Okay. What is missing here? Who has ever heard of uh, output formatters before? So this way it, it, it gets uh, it gets tricky. So remember, I've, uh, I've I've taken a a picture of you guys, and hopefully this will work. I just want to see if I can email myself this picture. Sing us a song. So long. Or, or don't. <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't have OneDrive set up yet, so it's not going to be working. OK. So let's see if I can open my quickly. Do this. I'm going to cut you guys off. Just a sec. And uh, la 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 la. <laughs> okay, cool. We have liftoff. I probably need to share my screen again. Or what? It's fine. Okay. So media media type format is is a way to sort of um, ask for, with the same resource identifier. I want to get back text, or I want to get back JSON, or I want to get back image, depending on the content type you ask it. And this is all RESTful matters. So I can go um, slash ping, I get text back. Or I can tell it, hey, I want the image of that same URL, and I get back image. So technically, if I uh, go to my little downloads thing here, here we go, save that guy. I want to save it into. Content, I want to take that out, put that in. Um, no. So it's Pong, is it Ping? Was it Ping? I can't remember now. Pong. Pong, PNG, should work. Yes. Hey. All right, so now the idea here is, okay, it's anonymous. If I go and say, you know, normal, normal Ping, it's not running. Ah, come on. GD, sir. Me and this whole thing. There we go. Okay, cool. No. 
some error. Oh, again, I just run it from Visual Studio. I've removed some files, that's why. It's not going to work there. Hopefully, it's going to work here. Here we go. It's not that hard. Here we go. Boom. Right. Now, the idea is if I sell it, I want to be able to say content type is text plain. I get bong back. I've written one specifically that says a text ASCII. I get ASCII back, you know? The same endpoint, just different re results. I can go PNG. Hopefully, this works. As our selfie. Hey, that's cool. So this is the idea how, how it works. Are you guys, you want to see how this works, or must I carry on? You want to see? Now you guys want to move. No, now I'm going to move on. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's see. So it's called formatter. So I've, I've built a ping pong output formatter. It in implements output formatters. Now, this is important. Input formatters is the requests coming in. And output formatters are the requests, obviously, going out, right? So if you do a request, I would like to have image. That's the output format that will kick in. And if you're getting a request back in, you say, this is an image. And the input format will actually kick in. And it has some validation logic to sort of know when it needs to kick in. Yeah, I've got some allowed types. Uh, I'm only allowing, so it's implementing two things. It's implementing, can I write the result to the output? And also, can I, oh, and actually writing the result to the output. So here, the implementation is, I'm checking if it's text ASCII or image PNG. If my path is also ping, because it's a specific ping output formatter, um, then I, I evaluate this as true. Then it will go down. Yeah, basically checks, OK, if it's ASCII, render text. This is my render text function that writes it to the output. And if it's a render image, who guessed it? Just taking bong.png out of my disk. This literally can be anything. The ideal for this is if you have a uh, employee list or something, getting an employee by ID, you know, uh, employee slash one, and get JSON back or whatever the content was, the ob object back. But if you actually, in HTML, you say employee slash one, it's actually requesting an uh, uh, image. So it'll give back an image. You know, it's sort of uniformity how it actually should uh, work. And that's quite cool. OK, this was a Quite a quick one. Oh, yeah. True. How do you register it? In the um, MVC part of things, in the MVC core builder, you say options dot output format is insert. In this case, I insert it on the top, because otherwise, uh, it keeps on getting the JSON one that's there. I don't want to clear everything out. So I want it to, to be added on top before everything else, and then it will handle all my requests as I as I please. Cool? OK. So now let's quickly serve up a, a stopped feed, and we're almost done. We're almost at the cool part of serving up real data. Then I'll hand it over to my friend, Gerald. That's the really cool part. <laughs> All right. Now things happen, eh? Um, if I exit it again, this is CCMB. Was it step five? What? Step step seven. Okay, cool. So now, how this app's actually working? It's actually giving you a feed of of players, and uh, it's it's giving you back who tracked what Pokemon. So for this to happen, we need a a list of 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 players, and we need a list of Pokemons, and we need our own database, sort of many to many. Kind of things. So we use our own data, uh, our own data store, which is all everything is stub right um, at the moment. Our Pokemons, I get back. Um, oh, actually, this is, this is a stub part, so I'm not going to go in there now. A second, what we do, we have an implementation of an entity lookup that's going to be looking up Pokemons and looking up players, and then we have our catch log, which is an implementation that is our log entries. So in this case, I'll just log this uh, player ID, two, three, blah, 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 blah. Pokemon one, two, three, and four, doesn't really matter what it is. And um, I've got a 
I add, in, uh, I add implementation, and I've got a get all. And this is where it actually becomes interesting. It sort of uh, joins my, my, uh, my feed that I have in my database or my data store to my uh, entities and my, to my Pokemons and to my players to get those information out there and, and make it work. And I believe if I run this, I will get something OK back. Pikachu. OK. So now it introduces a, what was it, feed endpoint. I need to pass in my uh, authorization token, feed. I get back a, uh, a date caught by, there's my name, uh, there's my Pokemon I got, and uh, there's some image URLs, etc. You will see how this lights up on the app itself. So the app will actually again go and uh, ask this feed and uh, request it. Yet again, if I go post, and I actually post something to this, uh, uh, to this endpoint, it will actually create a feed item, and it will do the same thing. Nothing much, nothing less. It's basic coding. I'm not going to go into details of this thing, because it's, this, is, this is sort of becoming out of scope how this works. Um, but this is just how you do it in MVC, um, or in uh, ASP.NET, wire up a dependency and make use of your dependencies. Like in your feed controller, this is where the root, uh, the root uh, templates come into play. I have a, uh, a get and a post. Oh, by the way, this, uh, who has ever heard of this attribute before? The root sort of block brackets a controller. So this means I don't have to do feed in there. It will take the, feed, uh, the controller's name, and it will use the route for the controller's name in there. Here I have three routes. If it's just a normal get, I default on the defaults that's defined in the in a the, in the function. If I say um, f slash feed slash from, I can pass in an ID where it should get it from. And also I can pass in a, a limit slash take and give me 10 or give me 100 or whatever, sort of for, for paging purposes, to make it restful, whatever you want to call it. But this is how you do like the attrib uh, attribute routing on this level. Here the implementation is, is quite simple. If I post it, I add a new entry and I sort of return that entry back to my, to my front end. I'm going to quickly move on to the following step, because it's uh, this is where the cool, th cool things start. You guys a beer, how's that? That guy can actually <laughs> buy himself a beer. <laughs> All right, so what's changed here? So we moved over from the actual, from the stubs to actual data. So the data we get from a uh, database called PokeDB. I think it's PokeDB, PokemonDB or something, .NET. There we go, Pokedex. The Pokemon data there. And the problem with this is if it sort of becomes well, not a problem on the site itself, but the nice thing about this is it's uh, it's a website, right? So it's it's sort of you can't query this really. So I'm making use of something of a, of a library called Angle Sharp. Now Angle, Angle Sharp will allow you to sort of parse HTML in jQuery sort of fashion. If you know jQuery, you can you can uh, read H HTML out of there with link, and then you can easily get your your rows out of there. And uh, like in this case, I'm I'm reading it in real time and caching it my uh, Pokemon from the Pokedex. Let's see how that implementation looks. This is all on GitHub. You can go check it out right now as I speak. So let's go to the Pokemon player. So here I do a, um, I'm not going to go into details really. It's, it's self-explanatory. But the idea is it selects all the table called Pokedex T-Body TR. Select a new Pokemon out of there. And uh, all the cells that's number, and all the cells that's uh, entity name, serialize it back and uh, add it to my Pokemons. Done. And it will actually give you a nice functionality. This one actually has a, um, an endpoint to get your Pokemons. It's taking longer the first time because it's caching it. Blah, blah, blah. So this is now in real time the, 
the Pokemon sits on that site. So it's how it sort of serializes it back, right? So it goes from the data store to my uh, to my um, to my data provider and sort of merges these two to my and gives it to my controller. The same goes for the the players. In this case, I've decided to use Meetup. You know, you, you guys have RSVP'd on, on, on the Meetup site. So it's actually going to be using your, your IDs on, uh, on Meetup and your pictures. And so if it, if it works, we'll see in Gerald's demo later <laughs> if it works. Do a request to the, to the API endpoint. Um, select a, a new player and then uh, re return from there. And like I, like I mentioned earlier, the, the thing out just working seamlessly as it should. So I'm going to be stopping there because I don't have any data. Hopefully, Gerald has some data. We're going to have a, a, a bit of a break now. Hopefully, I uh, sort of educated you guys a bit on ASP.NET Core and uh, stuff like that. If you have any questions, I'll be at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, uh, feel free to sort of ask me any questions or uh, give some feedback. Thanks. Yes, stop. <laughs>